Well, most times these stories write themselves. You know, things start off and you think they're going to be one thing, but a lot of times they end up being another. When the last opportunity you get for somebody to do a story on you to say the spotlight is growing dim on Clark, you think it's kind of over. Not at all. Underestimated and still I made it In the book of hard knocks I'm highly educated Nobody told me looked over but still dedicated Played in the league for 13 I ain't gotta be favorite Two Super Bowls, Honolulu I stood with the greatest The thing is this, it never rich I'm good with my neighbors DB Precision, Television Ain't asked for no favors Numbers don't lie, neither do pictures Just look in the papers No backing down or turning back Part two of the movie Never the biggest But it takes more than two just to move me Ain't gotta like what I'm saying, just watch me go to work and tackle all of these topics right here on Face First. Alright, man, welcome to Face First. Uh, this is LSU's locker room, actually. This is the last place I ever felt really important in, in football, and that's what happens when you're undrafted. But this is the Shazer uh, Everett, this is Mike Ford. Uh, they share something in common with me. They are also undrafted. And what's crazy is, like, people. People don't understand, like, there's a difference. Like, yeah, you in the NFL, but the money you start with is way different, right? But the way they treat you is different. Like, you go out and make a play, you go out and make a play, I might shoot y'all a text, like, that's it. You know, you get in a meeting, and they're like, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. But then the Tea. high money dude do it, it's like, this is it right it's here. perfect. It's the greatest thing ever. That's it. It's perfect. And so, Shays, like, y'all, and you guys are both different. Shays, you went to A&M. Played a ton, made a lot of plays. Did you expect to get drafted? Uh, I mean, I honestly did coming out. Uh, I didn't see why not. My sophomore year, I was a top 10 corner. Uh, I didn't have a great junior season. You said you played corner? Yeah. I, came, <laughs> I was a corner first. and uh, So, I mean, I didn't have the best junior season, but, I mean, I, I mean, you knew the talent was there, right? I mean, uh, but unfortunately, it just went that way. And I knew if I just got an opportunity, I was going to make the best of it. Did you have other offers than the team you chose? Uh, as far as college? No, when you came when you came out, like so. My my draft story is I'm at Jordan's first birthday party on yeah. a Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. Sunday I ain't even watching because I was like, if they call, they call. I'm on the phone with my agent. He telling me you got the Saints and the Giants. So I was like, shoot, I picked the Saints. I'm right yeah. at home, whatever, whatever. I go to say, he said, oh, Saints pulled it. So did you have more offers than the team you chose? Uh, as far as as far as I remember, no. Uh, I know I had Tampa on the table and maybe one other team, but mm -hmm. as far as Tampa being a cover two team, right. I was more comfortable going to going there to play corner. So uh, when you moved to safety after the end of my first year in the league, we had a lot of safeties go down. I think that's when we had Deshaun Ghost and mm -hmm. uh, a couple guys, and they went down, and so they just picked me. I was the last guy in rotation basically that had made a way on team and they moved me to safety to learn that and be a feel for the position. True, I like it. So you're different, right? Yep. You didn't go to Power 5 SEC no. schools. None of that. You know what I'm saying? You at CMO. Yeah. Right? But you the, but you the guy at CMO though. For sure. Right? You, you yep. the dude. I remember first phone call and eventually we could tell the people that you didn't know who the hell I was either. <laughs> right? So the agent called me. They're like, man, I got this guy. And listen, he's at a small school, but he's fast. He can jump. He's this, he's that. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll talk to him, you know. So we get on the phone, and we talking. I'm thinking he knows me. I'm like, oh, shit, this is Kate. <laughs> you know, I'm on TV. I played ball for 13 years. And I was like, you can send me videos. Yeah. He get to me. He talking about, man, I didn't know who the hell you was. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, real. Though. I mean, but did I mean, you think you? But did you think you get drafted from there? Or you already kind of knew because you had agents, everything. People yeah. pay for your training, so yeah, sure, sure. you were highly ranked. Uh, I mean, I thought that I would have got drafted. You know, going into like my junior year, I was all American or whatever. You know, and then senior year, I had a good season, but I had a lot of issues that happened. You know, outside of football and stuff right. like that. So I figured, you know, with that happening, my coach would always tell me, guys from smaller schools, if you have off the field issues that, you know, you probably got a less likely chance of getting drafted. So I figured, you know, I would try and go in, crush my pro day, and then hope for it. But I figured that it wasn't going to happen. Well, what was the weather on your pro day? 36 degrees. Oh, right. And outside, right? Outside, yeah. Ain't See, got that, but, like, that's small school stuff, though. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they ain't so even try to give them yeah. a chance. They ain't even try to give them a chance. <laughs> like, we ain't giving you no chance. Like, you come out here, you run 4-7. 
because it's 36 degrees, 37 degrees. So it, what? It, it is what it is. Yeah. So when, when, when you end up picking Detroit, did, did you think to yourself, I know I'm going to make a team, though? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of uh, went into it like you asked Shays. I had some other teams, and I just uh, weighed out the roster and the guys that, you know, I felt like I could compete with and give me a chance to make the team. So that's why I picked Detroit. And then, long story short, my dad was a big Lions fan. Oh, you know, okay. he, uh, he actually got buried in a Barry Sanders jersey. So that was part of the big reason why mm -hmm. I chose them. And then, of course, with the competition. So I felt like, you know, I would give myself a chance and I'd be able to, you know, beat those guys out, come camp and everything. It's funny you say that because I remember you asking me, about like the corner position and like weighing your options and yeah. I was like hey whatever you feel like the best I, I know you was talented watching you train yeah. right. coming in I knew I was some shits <laughs> <laughs> I was like these dudes better than me and they just right. getting here so I was like you you can work all you gotta do is work and you can take that spot for sure yeah. like I, I remember my, my mom when I was going to New York for my first camp my mom don't say much she's super quiet super sweet lady right she hugs me and she was like don't come back home without a job. <laughs> but like, probably bro, right before OTAs, y'all know where Tigerland is, it's right up the street. Yeah. And you know, shoot, like I said, man, this is like the last place I mattered. So in Tigerland, like I was that was dude. man. You know what I mean? Like that was back in the day, FUBU, all that stuff, all right? And <laughs> no, Tiger, Tiger, yeah, Tigerland had rules though. Like you couldn't wear certain things. Yeah. And so people would be standing in line, walk up in like slippers, whatever I had on, and they'd be in line like, hold on man, like how he get in? And you know, at that time, I was Ryan Clark, man. he's here. I was like, what you mean? Ryan Clark. So I'm in, bar closes, man, I'm sweeping, and I'm telling the dude that owned it, his name was Tiger Tide. So I'm telling him, I'm like, man, I'm in here sweeping your floor, and I'm about to go make six figures. I was had a little bit that yeah. night, you know yeah. what I mean? Feeling but, so. right, but then I remember waking up in the morning being like, that was so stupid. Like, we don't we don't get jobs. Yeah, it's not you know, guaranteed. You know, yeah. like that. So when, give me what your feeling is early on in your career on cut day? Nervous as hell. I mean, I don't want my phone to ring. I kind of keep it away from me just on loud. And if I hear it, I hear it. I might not answer it. <laughs> Let them call me twice and make sure they call the right number. Right. I mean, it's definitely, it's stressful. But once you pass that day, I mean, it's the best feeling in the world when you go in and go to that team meeting to know that, like, you got to go put that work in now to make the most of what you worked so hard in the offseason right. to achieve. Yeah, I, I think like the, the, the hard part for me on, on cut day was not cutting myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like it's like that, it's like that at camp too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you no. you we will talk, like y'all will call me and you know, you were older when I met you, so you were kinda established, but he'd be like, I'm balling, like I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But they putting such and such over me or, mm -hmm. or, or every time this dude do something, he moved to the ones or moved to the twos. What's your way of, of, of processing that and handling that, though, so the next day you go out and still ball? I mean, for me, it was like I just took it like every day I had to make one more play than the guy that was in front of me. I just always wanted to, you know what I'm saying, give them something to put on the big screen, you know. Like our coach, Matty P, he, uh, if you do something good, he puts you on top of the big screen in front of the whole team. So that was my goal every day to find a way to be on that board, be up there, you know what I'm saying, so everybody know who I was. Because undrafted, those guys don't know who you is. They don't know nothing about you. Right, so straight up, though, like real question. You don't have to say no names. Have you played with dudes who played ahead of you and you say to yourself, I know for a fact I'm better than him? 100%. You know what I mean? I think like that's the hard part. But that's confidence in yourself at the same time. And I feel like early on with me, I didn't have that confidence in myself. Right. So I was fighting to survive opposed to fighting to play ball. Right. So yeah, I feel like that was the thing that was bothering me. Like you said, I'd call you and be like, man, I feel like I'm better than this guy. I feel like I'm putting more on tape. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it was, you know, like in, the, in this league, it's, sometimes it's political. So I was just like, like you would tell me, just keep going, Mike. Just keep, keep working, keep doing, keep putting right. on that film. But, but see, like I think – when, like me coming up, you know, y'all remember I got pissed off with y'all the last day of training last time, and I just started talking about like what my career, what my career was like. Like that, that truly is, that truly is like the path of an undrafted guy. Like you got to keep, you you can go ball out this year, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't get that huge deal or that big deal, they're gonna be looking at you because they're gonna go draft a first rounder or a second rounder in their position, and they're gonna look at you. And the first time you don't do it, they start thinking, "See, that's why. That's why he didn't get drafted, right? Mm -hmm. Like we just got this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like let, let's play him. Yeah. And that that was always to me extremely frustrating, but also motivating. 
Yeah. Right? Because I, because like that was, I said like small goals. My mm-hmm. first year, I'm with you, Shay. You talking about surviving? My first year, I was like, man, I just want to make the team. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was, I was the same way. I was sitting up there like, Lord, this phone ring. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna tell him I don't even have my playbook. You, you know, we had the big joint. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm just gonna tell him I ain't got no playbook. How you gonna fire me then? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so, and then. I remember when I got cut in New York, so I was working across the street. You know what I'm saying? When Washington called me, and they called me the day before camp. Yeah. You don't make the team the day before camp. Yeah. So I'm sitting in my room. It's the first cuts. We're in Washington. And I don't think y'all go to Richmond now, Shades, but we used to go to like some little compound type thing, right? So I'm sitting down, man, I'm watching the TV, and on the, they, they do the cuts. And you know, they're supposed to call you. Yeah. Last name, Ryan Clark. I was like, dang, ain't that about a bit? Last one. And so I'm on the phone with y'all, and you know, y'all all the way live. That's effed up. <laughs> they ain't even call you. What type of pool? Ooh, ooh, organization is this? Like, well, and I was like, man, like, I ain't even tripping. You yeah, know, yeah. so next day I bring my bags in. I'm, that, you know how it is when you get cut. Hey, man, appreciate y'all, man. You're gone. Hey, I'm, 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 right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that. Yeah, first off, up, I'm bro. not going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, we're not friends. Yeah. Okay. Like, I've been here three weeks, three, bro. Three. You barely talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Don't lie. Right? So, man, I get in the office, and uh, Gray Williams is there. Gray Williams, you know, he be doing, he's doing a lot of cussing, but he was, like, all proper in his office, so he crossed his legs. He says, that motherfucker. I can't believe he did that. <laughs> I want to tear his ass. My ass is chapped. So he cussing the whole time, right? I'm like, get to the meat of it, dog. I'm like, get to the point. Yeah. And this is the first cut. And he goes, he's like, man, if we didn't make the team today, you made it. And, like, that was the first time I was like, oh, like, I can do this. Yeah. I can play. Yeah. You know, when did you have that moment, though, where you were like, I can do this. I can play. I can, I'm, I'm not just fighting and scrapping in this league. Like, I can be a dude. Yeah, uh, I would say, you know, like during the preseason, like I didn't get that much play time. I don't know if it was a fact of being hidden or whatever, but that last preseason game, you know, they put me in a position to where I was playing safety and I had to play a new role and I bounced right in there. And I mean, I led the team in tackles that fourth preseason game and made some plays against a guy that was on hard knocks and they was, you know what I'm saying, big on them. So that's when I felt like, you know, I could make this team, I could be a player. And like all the older guys after that game, they was like, Mike, man, you did a hell of a job. Like, you gonna make this team. Like, you gonna, you gonna be here. Like, you did good enough. So that's when I felt like, you know, with the older guys that played in the league for a while, giving me that encouragement and that, you know what I'm saying, them words of encouragement, I was like, okay, so I really, I really could play. You know what right. I'm saying, I belong here. Right, I, and obviously you had that, that moment, Shays. But like you're in a different position, like you're in that in that in that transitional position, right? Where we go from, because you're a captain, right? Yeah. Spe- so you you go from I want to make the team, like I want to play, and then it's like now I want to make an impact. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was that was kind of like my transition. I get to Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh was what it was. They were already really good players. I thought I had played good at Washington, but they bring in Archuleta, and I remember being in Pittsburgh, man, and like they telling me, yeah, we didn't really know about you at first. You know, that was, this was that practice. I, I get the starting job, and they tell me straight up, we're going to play this kid that we drafted at some point. He said, you're starting. You're starting because of the age, the experience. We want to go with you first, but they're going to play this kid. Yeah. And I remember walking out the office, and I was like, they got me effed up. They, can't, yeah. they ain't going to play. He ain't going to play. And he didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got hurt like week 12, and he finally played. Yeah. But I was like, nah, like, that's, that's not it. When you think about trying to make that transition, Shays, what does that feel like for you? And do you think you're, you're coming around to get to that point to where I ain't got to go into camp every year and prove to y'all I can play? Now it's about going out here and just doing it. I mean, that's me now, uh, going out there and just doing it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that really started last year. And as, as a leader and as a captain, like you said, but the transition for me, it started from just making the team to, oh, I'm impactful on special teams. And it wasn't until after, towards the end of that year, when I saw my name on a Pro Bowl ballot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, like they want guys to vote for me, and I'm the only one on there besides right. for the punter Tress. And I was like, who, by the way, at times has been the best player Washington had? Oh yes, indeed. Tress can go. To, well, you know, I played with Tress, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tress can go, dog. That's what, he on year eleven. Like, he will kick forever. Yeah, he got a leg. Oh, he can go. He can go. And um, so at that point, it was like I'm learning then, and I'm still taking advice from guys, but it's like the guys I look up to. Like, they're telling me, like, bro, you can ball. Mm-hmm. So it's like I take it from there and it's just I kind of take that leadership role and it's just like 
I got to go make the play every time I'm out there on special teams, and they're going to recognize me on defense. And that's when I started getting my packages, and I started getting in, um, you know, big packages, in the game packages. I didn't care how I got out there as long as I got out there. Mm. And just do my job and make an impact. But doing your job doesn't make an impact. Right. So, and that's something I had to learn. Like, And as far as by year three, four, you know, I played with a bunch of safeties. I learned a lot from a lot and heard a lot from a lot of safeties. And it's just like I got to understand it from my own aspect. Right. And them making a play is in the same way I'm going to make a play. Yeah, I think – and, and coaches, coaches understand that in coaching. I got to play with two dudes who were just different. Right. So I played with Sean. I played with Troy. And cover three for them ain't look like cover three for me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Troy would do stuff, and they try to put it in the game plan. Like, he would always blitz cover three if he felt something. Mm -hmm. So he just vacate the flat. So Coach LeBeau got tired of it and was like, look, we're going we're gonna to take the sound, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna line up in this front. Troy, you're going to blitz. We're going to show three. You're going to blitz, and we're going to take the sound, and he's going to be curled flat because he didn't want to drop the flat. Troy was like, no. Because the reason it works is I'm not supposed to be there. Yeah. And he, but like that was his thought. But we can't say that. No. There's a lot of times, no. you know what I mean? Bro, I remember, y'all, I remember like it was yesterday. They come out, every time this team came out and doubles number two off the ball, it was two press outs. Every time. It was tear out each side. So we in cover two. I'm like, dang, I know the call. So I'm telling I, 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 I. I was like, you take the inside one. If they throw it to him, I'll go tackle him. Right? Because all they wanted to do was, is make you expand. Throw the, hit, throw the, hit, throw the, hit two and get it, right? So you go get it. So, man, I, he go jump it. I go to number one. I look over at Troy's side. Troy dang there in the backfield. So him, instead of him telling the corner, you know, you get it, he was like, nah, I knew what the play was. Like, I'm going to get the yeah, pick. I'm going to make the play. But that's how I think that's a freedom that we don't feel like we're afforded. How you were saying, just doing my job, yeah. don't, don't, don't get don't me. Don't make me play. Don't, don't get me no you know, no money or don't, don't make the plays or it's not enough. But even with that being on the field, what was life like? Right? Because we was, I was broke. I don't know about y'all. For sure. Y'all may have had money. No. I ain't had no money. Right? <laughs> Everybody thinks, at least outside, that when you play football, you get rich immediately. The difference, though, what, what, what's the difference in, in trying to balance? Man, I see these dudes in the same locker room. They live the drafted life, though, or the second contract life. Yeah. And then you trying to, like, ball on the budget because you, you worked hard as hell. Yeah. So you might want your little chain. Yeah. You want you some, some gear. Uh-huh. How, how you budget that money, though, to make sure I'm living in the NFL, but I ain't NFL? Man, I, 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 I live. Want it? I go. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. When I got in the league, I stayed in the housing right next to the facility. It was probably one of the cheapest apartments <laughs> there. I stayed there my rookie year. I was on P-Squad the first seven weeks or whatever. I wasn't buying no designers, no shoes, none of that. I was trying to save every dollar I had because... I mean, like you said, the drafted guys, Tracy Walker was my best friend. He went third round. Right. So he going and he didn't bought a truck right away as soon as he got there. I'm like, man, I ain't need, I got $7,000. Right. <laughs> After taxes, I got five. I ain't, right. got, I ain't got no money. I right. seen that same amount of money down there, Pell Grant and stuff like right. that. So I still was treating it like I was in college until I could, you know, finally get activated and make some more money. Well, on a different note from Mike, I was uh, a little irresponsible. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you say, you know, they say you, you can go broke, don't spend all your money, but you don't know until you're getting it. Right. And the first check, oh, I'm going to say the first check. The second check, oh, I'm not going to spend that. Now you got 50000 in the bank. It's a lot of money. You know, I that's, signed that's for $2,500. Right. So it's like, oh, I can spend a little bit of this. Next thing you know, you done spent a little bit of this the last three months. Right. And that little bit then added up, and now you're 100000 in. So it just... The managing of it is you think it's going to keep coming and you don't realize until it's not coming that it's not coming. Bro, <laughs> when that off season hit, it's a whole different game. Different ball. And that's a, that, that was what I hated about it. When you getting them checks, they're so big. They're so big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, even if you ain't making millions, you like, this one check? But you forget, we don't get it for 52 weeks. Mm -mm. Like, you yeah. got it in the season. You don't go to the playoffs. You don't do that. Like that that it's junk that junk dries up, and so it, it, it becomes a it becomes now now you're in a situation you're like all right, I ain't making no money, right? But I'm also bottom tier guy, so now I gotta go work and fight next year, right? Like so I gotta be in shape, 
You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think that was my problem. When that offseason hit, even though I saved all that money, man, I went out partying, start buying stuff. I just felt like, hey, because, you know, I got activated 10th games, went to starting right away. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to be here next year. Next I'm, year you up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm spending all that. Next thing I know, I'm waiting on my, I'm waiting on the PP check to come. Right. It happens so fast, though. Taxes. You know what I'm saying? It's all, <laughs> all of it was dang there. I'm waiting on the PP. Luckily, I played enough games to where my PP could put me back in a good situation. Right. But, man, it was gone, now. Though I remember, you know, because I got married young. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had Jaden, I was 19, Jordan, I was 21. I'm married at 24. So, luckily for me, like, I, I wasn't in the offseason. It wasn't about, like, clubbing. So, I didn't have to worry about tables, this and that, flying places, Clothes, all that stuff. Fly. Right. Because now I got to be fly. If I got to go to the club three days, that's three new <laughs> outfits. Three <laughs> new. You can't right. wear the same can't, shirt. They can't wear the same shirt. Right. That. You already seen me in it. I took a picture <laughs> in this. Like, you already know. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, I was, like, the opposite. I didn't want to do nothing. You know what I mean? Like my yeah. my old lady was she texted me yesterday and she was like, um, you know, I told Jaden at the hair salon, you have really changed your outlook on vacation. Because like I was so like the way my mind worked, like I felt like vacation took me away from balling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like I didn't work hard. Like I wanted to be successful, obviously. Like we all want to be successful. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be on me. Like I wanted to be able to say, if they started this dude or if they cut me that you made a mistake, that I know I did everything I was supposed to do, I worked as hard as I was supposed to work. Like what I could live with is if I do get that call and I know I ain't been training, I know I didn't F it off, like all those things, like all those things were, were, were scary to me. And so now that you get to a point where you can spend it, like my, cause my wife was like, look, we ain't leaving these children nothing. Yeah. She, was like, <laughs> she, was like, she was like, you gave them college funds, they can go to college, the rest of this for us. Uh, we finna live. Yeah. And like and, and that is that is still weird to me. So if you think about the biggest purchase you made that you think is dumb. Not a big purchase that works. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because I know like you're getting in business now, doing real estate, those things are good. Yeah. Right? You go, man, you know what? Looking back on it, I should have did that. What would it be? Oh. <sighs> They had to put my mind in some work right now, cause after seven years you forget all the dumb stuff. You <laughs> no, after seven years you want to forget I the dumb stuff. You, you be like, all it take is one reminder, right? You be like, I would be so much richer if I didn't get this. It probably was a an incident I had of, like you said, partying, going out, and I had a couple chains, went out partying, doing too much, the chains came up missing. So, I mean, from an aspect that money of like, gone. that's just money dumped in the drain yeah. because I'm living a lifestyle that I wasn't a big partier, mm -hmm. but when I went out, I like went out. Oh no, you just like me. Like I, I tell my wife all the time, I didn't, I didn't really, I don't see like the meaning behind one beer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm going to drink a beer, I'm going to drink beers. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm like, I get that. I get yeah. that. What you think yours was, dog? Like I said, man, that off season, that club, like I said, man, I I spent so much money in them clubs rookie year. Like, if I could take it back, I'd tell me, really tell me, that. tell me the memorable club moment though that you got for that money. What's the, what's the? Do you have a club moment where you like, you know what? But that's right, that was worth ten thousand. You know what I'm saying? That was worth ten thousand. I was, I was in L. A. One time, you know what I'm saying? We was, we was me and you know some of the guys. We was out in L. A. You know I'm. I'm in the league. I started a couple games. Deshaun Jackson over there in the uh, club. Oh, Lord. So, Deshaun <laughs> Jackson goes. Deshaun a decade deep. He, he got all the, you know, he right. got offensive big money. Balls. <laughs> offensive he money. Ball. He's right. big balls. So, he pop a couple bottles. And he don't know who I am. But, like, I'm sitting there trying to pop my bottles just like he popping them. Not realizing when this check come, I'm going to have to pay for all yeah, of them. Yeah, the sparkle is different. <laughs> When the sparklers start coming out, it's all funny games when the party, but when the real lights come on and the sparklers yeah. go, you're like, oh, dang, you got to read man, that Man, that <laughs> bill was about ten to $15,000, mm. and we had to split it like three ways, and my guys was like, you the one that called them bottles. Facts. <laughs> so now we all drink. We all drink the bottle, but you asked for them. But I'm the one that asked for uh. them, so now I got to pay for them. <laughs> nah, hey. We gotta have a record in that though. Yeah. Cause now, now I'm gonna tell you now, you need to throw whatever you drink then, you need to throw it up. Cause clearly <laughs> I need that back. Yeah, I need that back. If, if, if it's only me, guess what? I'm the only if I'm the only one paying, I'm the only yeah, one that should I'm be the one drunk right now, man. <laughs> that joke and that joke's that, crazy. That one hurt right there. But see though, like that that leads me into though, like responsibility stuff. Yeah. 
right? I think, you know, I kind of gave y'all, I had a ton of responsibilities. You know what I mean? When, when we were, bro, my wedding, because I was working here at the time, like my wedding, we started, we was like, we was going to have like 50 people. Because I was like, I had saved my, because I had saved my little money. I was like, this is a great nest egg for us to start. I was like, truly, for like a normal person's life, I'm doing good. I had a job. I had a lot of money saved. I was like, I ain't got friends like that. I was like, and I've been knowing you. You ain't got friends like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're going to get some family people here. And then, like, other people want folks to come. So the, the, the wedding, you know, it got, it got bigger. But, like, my thought was, you know, in playing not only just the, the money situation of taking care of people. It's like, I got to take care of people with this job. Yeah. You know, and like obviously now I played a long time. I, I do things now that pay me well so I can do that. Shay's like, you got a son. That that's your son. Yeah. Not like, hey, we know you got a child. Nah, he 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 lives with me. Like that's 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 my baby. How do you balance, you know, being a father and doing those things, making sure you excel in the field, but passing down some of the things that he doesn't make the, the decisions that you feel you shouldn't have made. You know, when you first got in the league or made in college and different things like that. Well, I just try to uh, give them the best parenting advice I can. Uh, and I, I get that from a, a great stepdad mm -hmm. in the sense of, like, a guy that took me in and showed me how to be a man mm -hmm. and showed me hard work. So I, if anything, I still into him is hard work, discipline, and, you know, uh, everything I learned from my dad. So, I mean, to be... Did you teach my uh, fixed cars? Oh, I actually have them under the car working on stuff. <laughs> just little stuff, you know, just... <laughs> right. Just to keep them going, um, but the the as far as being a single dad and trying to balance football and him, I just have a strong support system, mm -hmm. and you got to give up so much more than you probably would be willing to, as say me being a single father at twenty nine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm fine with that because I want him to be the next Everett. Right. Like, you know, that's my bloodline now, mm -hmm. and everything I instill in him, I want him to represent for our family line. So. I mean, it's tough at times, but it gives me, like, so much more to work for. Mm -hmm. And when I'm lazy or don't want to, it's like I have a reason to. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't, you know, you get to come home and it's like y'all going to be everything wrapped into one, though. Like, that's going to be your little <laughs> homie. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to be your little homie. We homies, we brothers. Right. We, we beefing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be times where y'all get into it and y'all go to separate rooms. You be like, man, I'm lonely as hell. And then I go tell them, hey, I'm still your dad. Like, right. I'm here. Like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, you know, kind of bouncing off that, Mike, you mentioned, you know, your father, Detroit fan, being buried in a, a Barry Sanders um, Jersey, like, for that to come all the way around, right? For that to come full circle, yeah. and now you are a Detroit Lion. Obviously, Father's Day just passed, so the, and that is your daddy. To, for sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> that That's your pops. Like, how does how does that feel, man? And, and do you carry that with you and trying to make him proud in what you do now? For sure. I mean, like like I said, I'm, I'm there because of him, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, every day, I mean, every game, I stand on, I stand on the 42-yard line because that was his number. And I just, you know, after we do the national anthem or whatever, I always kiss up to him because, shit, I ask him to be with me because right. you're the reason I'm here, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that's that's pretty much what it is. And, I mean, I feel like he with me. I feel like he's the reason I'm here right now. A lot of guys, you know what I'm saying, when I grew up, they would always tell me, man, your dad was one of the smallest guys, but he would bring, bring the hit to somebody. He would hit right. somebody. So, like, I, pat, I always pride myself in, you know, tackling and not mm -hmm. always trying to live in his image. So that's, awesome. so that's, that's pretty much it. I just try and do everything to make him proud. That's that's how I would take it. Nah, I love that. And that's I think, man, we we get caught up in doing this and people forget that we just human. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That like y'all might have to go ball for three hours and then go home and do real life stuff. Laundry. Right. Sure. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> right. Which is stuff I don't want to do. Like I remember, man, it's my my second year in Washington, I had missed the first few games. I told my PCL in camp doing something stupid, diving mm -hmm. for a ball that I didn't catch. You know what I mean? Just dumb. Some shades. So. Just, it was, <laughs> it was, bro, bro, it was so shades. So I'm talking about, I was like, ooh, ooh. Bam, I hit the ground. I was like, oh, that's weird. Got up, out of there, right? So I, I, I get back. We playing the Eagles, Donovan McNabb. It's fourth down. They try to run a little spot route. I pick it. Show and tell. I'm, I'm about to, you know. I don't care that the game's over. I'm trying to score. Sure. Like, it's a better play if I score. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I It's fourth down. Game's over. Yeah. Don't care. 
I'm gonna outrun him. Donovan fat at this point. I'm gonna outrun him. You know what I'm saying? So Sean come tackle me like he's calling me little killer, little killer, get down. I was like, bro, you gonna score at some point. You know what I'm saying? You six two, run four, you gonna score. I ain't gonna score no more. <laughs> it was my touchdown. Bro, it's me and Donovan McNabb, dog. Give me a shot. Yeah. Let me outrun him. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so and so that happens, man. And I remember, like, after the game, because it was just like a regular season game, like I was kind of like misty. I was like super excited because I was like, man, my son was watching. My girls ain't watch me. They ain't care. They ain't coming to the Super Bowl or nothing. <laughs> I was like, Jordan's watching his favorite player, Ray Lewis, right now. Maybe I could be his favorite player now. Yeah. yeah. Get home. Them jokers just stopped the toilet up. Wow. <laughs> then you got work to do. Now I got, got to work, work to do, dog. Gotta go to I got to go to work. So now I didn't climb up the stairs because at the time we live, you know how the houses are in, you know, Ashbury and all that little townhouse. Yeah, it's, it's three. I got to climb, climb all the stairs, man. Up. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you could, so you could, you didn't see that pic? So you didn't see that. So I'm, you know what I mean? I remember. So Monday, when they do the media, they was like, so how'd you celebrate the win? And I was like, man. man I was unclogging the toilet. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but yeah, but like, but but that's the that's the life though, dog. Like yeah. that, like that is the life. And eventually, you come back to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that's what that's all I do now. And I'm different because I get to be on TV. You know, so like I be talking to people and I be like, man, you know, when you struggle and you go through this and you feel obsolete, you know, I be trying to give you advice and they be like, dog, you went from playing football to being on TV. Like you ain't never have to. Yeah. Well, one, it's because I was willing to do the work, so shut up. I'm trying to help you now. <laughs> yeah. don't, you, don't you worry about me. But when you think about where your career is, is going, like, like what's your goal, right? Because we all have, like, we all have this, this, this big goal, right? I used to set stupid goals, and not stupid in the sense of I thought they were dumb, but in the sense that I was like, you know what? I know this isn't a goal other people set. Like, I wasn't like, I want to go to a Pro Bowl. I was just like, you know what? I want to start. Like, a huge goal for me was I wanted to be a captain. Yeah. Right? Because I felt like that's a long way to come from nobody wanting you to everybody on your team or to a lot of people on your team saying, you know what? Like, this is our leader. Yeah. Like, I rock with this dude. So when you look, when you're done, said, when it's all said and done, what do you want your career to say? Uh, honestly, I mean, goals that I've set for myself is I want to make a Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. I want to win a Super Bowl. And, I mean, I want to be a top undrafted guy. Yep. And, I mean, that's not easy to do if you see the undrafted list. It's actually some good dudes, man. It's some good it's dudes, some right? Of, it's some cast so, of gold jackets, dog. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, I still have time to work and achieve. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's something you it's, – it's a tough goal to reach. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, guys want to win Super Bowls every time they go out there on the field. Right. But it's one team that's going to win that. I have a question about the Super Bowl before I get to <laughs> No, I got – this is the real question. I'm going to ask you, too. Do you believe that every team, all 32 teams that enter training camp, have an actual opportunity to win a Super Bowl? No. Hell no. Hell no. That is a complete farce. Yeah. You know, and like that was what I loved about Pittsburgh. For eight years, bro, every time I packed my bags and I went to Latrobe, Pennsylvania, I was like, we can win a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Does that ever get hard? Like both of y'all, like even you, Mike, like yeah. you in Detroit, you playing with Matt Patricia, y- y'all soon. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> poop is not a strong enough word. Oh, man. You know what I mean? And this yeah. is on YouTube, so we can cuss, it don't really matter, but yeah. y'all with some shits. <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like what's that like? Like, does, does your individual quest, though, ever become more than that? Because I can be honest, when I was in, when I was in your position, I was different. I was where you were. When I was in your position, dog, we could have been 0-16. Yeah. And not that I was like, well, go home and be like, oh, man, I'm so glad we lost. But I would sit back and be like, I ain't going to lie. I had a good game. I had 12 tackles. I balled. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, where, so now are you, so, are you focused on those team and big goals? Or is right now making sure Mike Ford is straight? I mean, right now I got I to gotta focus on me being the best player I could be. That's how I feel, you know. This year, I wanna I wanna make sure I'm a starter. You know, I yep. wanna make sure I have the most production out of our DBs. You know, lead this team, be one of the best guys. You know, stuff like that. You know, and I feel with that comes the, the team. Rest of it. You know, True. the stuff the rest comes with. It. So if I can if I can do my part and to a higher level, I feel like I can bring the rest of the guys with me. Good. It's funny that you like you ask that, but it's like as an undrafted guy, 
based off what you're doing, I feel like your goals change. Like how you said, one hundred percent. Yeah. Like no. you, you, your team not being good. You want to go out and be the best you can be. Yeah. Absolutely. But if you got a good team around you, you got to collectively come and be a good player to help the team. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, and I just think too though, like that jump comes with being in different places in your life, in your career. You know, what I man. Like I can be, I can be honest. Like I was blessed when I went to Washington. We were number two, number two defense in the league. Pittsburgh was number one, mm-hmm. but we only run four games. Like we get beat like ten seven. You know yeah. what I mean? Like so much so, bro. Like we would, like we would go out, and at the time, like I didn't drink, yeah. so I would be like the jacket holder. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> I would just hold the section up. But at some point, all the boys would start feeling good. Well, all four or five of us who hung out, and we just start hugging and swaying, going, "We might lose, but we go hard." Cause that's yeah. what we felt like yeah. at the defense. Yeah. We were like yeah. the defense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, like, and like, and what was crazy is it was, and, you know, Antonio like Pierce was one of the guys. He was undrafted too. It was his first year start. He left that and went and got a deal in New York. Like, we understood those things. Yeah. And then you get to Pittsburgh, though, and you start to realize, you know what? When you're on really good teams, y'all all ball, and everybody ends everybody up getting paid. Get paid. Everybody gets paid. Right? It's hard when you're not on good teams and you like, because we talked about I got to eat. I got to eat. Like, yeah. I got to go out and I got to go out. Because if I and, don't, I'm undrafted. They're going to get rid of me. But, see, I just think, I think people don't feel that with – what like other dudes get to do? Like that was why like, I love Troy so much, man. His rookie year, he's like, he's like every time I got in the game, something bad happened. You know what I mean? He's like, he's a dime, and he's mm-hmm. like, man, every time I went out there, RC, I did something wrong. Somebody scored, I had a bust. So he said in the off season, bro, he woke up at six in the morning. His wife packed him a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner, and he would go to the place he trained like it was his job. And he said he decided in that offseason that if he wasn't better, he was going to retire. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think, like, he was a first-round pick, which is different. But I feel like for us, like, that's how you always got to be. Like, you always got to be in that mindset that, like, the next play, the next opportunity is going to make or break whether this is my job anymore. So, my, you know, it's funny you said that about, being one of the best uh, undrafted guys, you know, also listening to you saying being one of the top playmakers on your team. You know what was the the only goal I set when I signed a contract with the Giants, which, by the way, my signing bonus was $683.74. Dang, you beat me. That's what <laughs> I thought I was rich, too. Hey, I, I, was like, that check. I was like... Man, like if I save this long enough, I can get me some Steve Maddens. Like that just yeah, dropped. Yeah, they had Steve the Madden. Yeah. I was like, bro, like if I get this money from like OTAs and stuff, I give me some Steve Maddens for the season start. Like that yeah. was that was my thought. Only goal, like the one goal I set that day was I wanted to be the last safety of my draft class play. You want last right? Because because I, I was like, you may not be able to be better than. Me. Yeah. And I was drafted with Ed, so there's that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Reed, but he played 12 and I played 13. And like that mattered to me. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, man, 32 teams had ample opportunity to draft me and y'all all refused to. But I played longer than, than all, all of these guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like that jump was, was important to me. And the other hard part was like, I was like, I don't really see people like me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like the things that, that we know about ourselves, because they become intangible. Like, Mike, you're a little different. You know, and I can say this in front of Shays, you are more talented than we are. Like, faster, you know what I'm saying, like, jump higher, all that stuff. But we're very much alike. We like, you know what? I can't do all this stuff, but this this stuff, I'm going to do. Do you ever feel the pressure of, like, man, you know what? If I can't do this, then I'm not bringing nothing to the table. Uh, no, because at this point, I feel like it's not anything I can't do. Mm-hmm. I just got to figure out how to get it done. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you taught me that, honestly. I mean, mm-hmm. you just got to figure it out. Right. And, I mean, from the first time I came here, you said when you go back, you got to be a little faster. Yep. You got to be a little bigger. You got to be a little stronger. So, every year, I bring something that's a little better. Mm-hmm. So, they can't say Shay's not working. Shay's not a good player. Right. Shay's mm-hmm. not good enough. Because every year, Shay's doing something that you like, yeah, we're right. going to keep him. That's real. Mm-hmm. That's real. Do... In your spot now, right? You get an opportunity to run with the ones. Like, do do you feel like though when you go to practice, like that's like a game? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> coaches, coaches, like if I make give up a play in practice, 
they be like, Mike, calm down, bro. It's not that serious. But to me, from what I'm used to, if I get bubble play, I might not practice no more this day. So right. every rep I go out there, I gotta give you everything I got. I'm trying to, I'm trying to execute to the best of my ability. I need to make every play because I know how I feel that if I don't make that play, y'all gonna talk about me upstairs. Mm. So I feel like, like you said, every day it's a game, and I'm, I'm coming out there. I'm going hard. I'm damn probably the most tired person on the field. Do you feel like, do you feel like, due to, and you know, we all got homeboys that was drafted. That a lot of dudes that get drafted and that have those positions, or not necessarily given positions, but y'all know how it is, bro. Yeah. Every day we gotta go out and prove we can play. Yeah. Right. Every day, dudes who get drafted early gotta prove that they can't. Yeah. And you gotta prove it over and over again. You might prove it to one team, and another team will give you a chance to give prove you another it, chance. Prove it to them. Do you see a difference in the way like dudes with money or dudes with with with, with high draft grades or draft slots or draft picks with the way they they approach the everyday work? Not that they don't care about ball. Yeah. Not that they don't care about ball, but are you sometimes like, that's why I'm going to get them? I'm going I'm to go out here out working, yeah. you know what Yeah, because, I, mean? I mean, like my rookie year, I made it a point that I was going to be the first person in there and the last person to leave. But, like, you know, we have some guys that hire draft picks or whatever. Like, they, they come in the building a little bit before the meeting, and then they get out there right away, and I'm just like, yeah, this where I'm gonna, this where I'm gonna make my stride at. This right. where I, this where I'm gonna win win over because I'm in here. They mm. they see me here. They know I'm here, and I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna show them that I want to be here. Right, you know what I'm saying. So that was that was my way that I felt like you know I can get you right there, and I'm just gonna I'm, hey, I'm gonna try and outrun you every sprint, all hey, of that. No, I got a good story about that, right? So my uh, first year at Washington, the family didn't come up, right? So man. I used to just go watch film at the facility because I had to watch it on a disc then. That's how old I am. Yeah. Right? They gave us the DVD, and I'd put it in my computer and just sit on the sofa and watch. <laughs> so I was like, man, I'd rather have, like, the little clicker joint. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I would leave Shays. I'd go to Boston Market because Jacques wasn't there. I'd go to Boston Market, get food, and go sit in the office and watch film. Mm-hmm. And, man, one night, you know, Joe Gills, man, he's so funny. He's, he had, like, a little high-pitched voice. Hey. Hey, guys. And so I hear him walking. I'm done watching film at the time. I think I'm probably sitting around eating, whatever. But I hear him walking. So I go out to go to the bathroom. I ain't had to pee. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But I knew he'd see me. Okay. Right? right? And it's like 8 30, 9 o'clock. And it's me, it's me, him, a couple of other coaches in the building. Yeah. So the next morning, because I was playing at this time. So the next morning, he gets in the meeting. He's like, hey, hey guys, Ryan Clark, right? You guys know he's smart, right? He knows everything. So everybody's like, yeah, so. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know what? Nine o'clock, I'm going to the bathroom. Who's going to the bathroom? Ryan Clark. Yeah. No, I wasn't. <laughs> but it was just him seeing me and the perception to him of like, this dude is always prepared. Like, I just know it because that's how my brain works. Like, you tell yeah. me, I know it. But he think to him, it's he's in here working. He's doing extra. He has all these things. And so we're going to give him a chance. Yeah. yeah. But like, that's what we got to do. Like, the other dudes, bro, they just get to... You got to give them. Yeah. Do what the hell they want. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, like, I know, like, I've gotten to the point now where, you know, different things inspire you. You know, but when I play, like, I'd watch Brian Dawkins. Yeah. And the reason I watched Beat Dog was because when I watched him, I felt like I could do some of those things. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't watch Sean. Like, you watch Sean, like, short. And yeah. not as fast, and like, hey, but you watch Brian Dog, it was effort and it was anticipation and aggression. Is there anybody like you think in the league, like you watch their game and you like, I like what dude does? I mean, as far as that, you just watch and like what they do? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Tyrant, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, I look at him just from the smarts of the game and obviously right. learning from Kendall how they yeah. do things over there. So, I mean, when you understand how somebody plays and what they're thinking, then mm-hmm. you could kind of understand, like, when you're watching them, what's the process. going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's obviously a guy that I look at as far as just studying the game. Yeah, I think – and that's a smart one, too, though, because it's not about physical traits. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I tell dudes that who play corner, they be like, 5'10", I'm like, man, who you watch a lot? And they be like, Jalen Ramsey. I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, you can't do none of that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, none of that you can learn from. You know, so that's the, the smart way – to approach it. Like, does anybody, like, you look and you say, you know what, this type of game is things I can pick stuff from and use in my game to elevate. Man, I got lucky because, like I said, I chose the Lions and the guy that I always watched was Slay. Mm. So, to be able to be in that locker room, you know, be under him, I used to pick his brain every day. Man, how you making these plays? How mm. you doing this? What you looking at? So, 
that guy, man, that's who I watch. And me and him are like similar body types. He's a little faster than me, but mm. similar. Oh, he can run, coach. Body, you know what I'm I know he can run like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. fast, fast. Yeah. Cause, and the other thing is, too, he's like the like nicest person I've ever oh, yeah. seen. Super nice. Like, yeah. like no matter who he, who play, yeah. he's showing love. Yeah, he's hey, man, that's a great play. I was like, like he called me about the DK thing. I was dying, yeah. bro. Yeah. He tried me, OG. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, like super cool cat. So obviously, we've had a lot of conversation about playing because it's what we do, mm -hmm. right? Football is important. In the end, for you though, Chase, is it more important to end up being this great football player you aspire to be, or is who you become as a person through these experiences more important to you? Definitely a person. Uh, I mean, football only lasts so long, so what I'm gonna do? go be a great player and then try to hold on to that afterwards. Like, yeah. it only going to last as long. It's going to be another 22 on, the, on Washington sure. And they're going to cheer for him. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's something you can't hold on to. You just got to make the most of it while you mm -hmm. have the opportunity. Yeah, what you thinking? Because yeah. right now you're young, coach. Yeah. You know, you know, you, when you're his age, you're like, shit, I don't even care what type of person I'm going to be. I'm going to be a great no. player. I can pay for the person. See, so you don't think about that. <laughs> yeah. Until you get on the back yeah. end. Of right. Stuff, so. right. Nah, for sure, it's definitely the person. Like, you know what I'm saying? One thing about me is my family, like you said, I ain't come from much. So mm -hmm. that was my big thing is, you know, after this, I want to make sure everybody, all my loved ones is good, you mm -hmm. know, make sure of that. And then just being just being the best person. Like, I don't want nobody to ever say, like, man, that dude an asshole. Like, right. I can't go talk to him. I can't go get advice from him. No, I want I want you to feel Dang. like, you know what I'm saying? After this, you can always come talk to me. Anybody. I wish I would have thought like you know that. Because there's that definitely, definitely people out there that go, that dude's an asshole. <laughs> 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 talk over me. <laughs> Sometimes, though. Hey. I mean, there's regular yeah. people in the world you think assholes. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. like you said, we still people. Yeah, man. I just, for sure. Yeah, I'm, for sure. I love y'all. <laughs> hey, I was just, hey, when you said it, because like, I was with you, I was like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's like, the one. Hey, I, I might be one of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that part. And, like, that's what's, like, that's what's crazy about, like, now when I look at the difference in y'all mm -hmm. between us, it's like, when my time, like, there, we weren't stars like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Like, Odell hasn't been, like, the Odell in a long time. Yeah. Injuries, right, being in Cleveland and these things. Mm -hmm. But there ain't a person in the world who loves football that doesn't know who that dude is. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? And like one of, you know, because I'm in the gym with y'all all the time, like Drake has a lyric and he says, you know, fame is so disconnected from excellence. Mm -hmm. You know, like it has, it has gotten to that point. So for you, when, when it comes to the game, when it comes to when it comes to life, which one would it be? Would it be being famous? Would it be being excellent at what you do? Or is it just making the most money you could possibly make? Because in true life, in, in, in what makes sense, it's like, yeah, you could be excellent at something, and it may not give you the money to take care of your family for generations. You may be famous for some reason that also doesn't give you monetary gain, but you like, shoot, I can go wherever I want. Yeah. Right? Or it could be like, man, I can take care of everybody forever. So for you, fame, excellence, or money? I would say excellence. I mean, because like you said, well, Odell, man, you perfect your craft. And if you're great at your craft, the fame going to come with it. That, right. that's, that come along with you being one of the best guys at what mm -hmm. you do. But I just want to be one of the best. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my, that been my goal all my life. I don't, I don't see myself trying to, why would I do something if I don't want to be the best at it? Mm -hmm. You know? Excellence, yeah, for sure. I mean, you... I'm, yeah, I'm country. You know, I go home. I still gotta work on stuff. So, right, right, right. I mean, the, the money not gonna do it for me. The the fame not gonna do it for me because I don't like to be out and like interact with right. too many people too much. No, you're just not nice. And, <laughs> and you're, like you my like I love you. Like you my yeah. brother. But I be like, man, like if we got people watch. I be like, I hope they don't talk to shit. Hey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. I tell people that, but it's like that's just how simple I am. It's just like. I want you to get to know me before you like really try to come across to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm approachable. I'm a nice guy, but it's just I'm simple. Mm -hmm. And outside of football, you probably won't think I play football because mm -hmm. you're gonna see me in some raggedy clothes, probably trying to work on the car. You know what I'm saying? No, it killed me too. Like when you post that, <laughs> or like when you post that joint, I'm like, hey man, like you ain't got to do that. Like Shane, Shane's gonna be a dude that own like all these real estate properties in the middle. It's gonna be like a mechanic shop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody used to have to come on. Right. He's work he working on cars. I'm gonna tell him too that if I'm coming over, I ain't working on no cars. Like, <laughs> like, like I am not like I don't car work. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like it is clear. Oh, I see Patman at nine sixteen. 
Yeah, like which what? one is that? <laughs> hey, you gonna fool around and get a gun and a, 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 a rap verse? Okay, you a nine? <laughs> you need the no, 16, 16 bars. Out 16 bars. <laughs> hey, you gonna get 16 bars? I don't yeah. know what the hell that is. Well, fellas, I appreciate you. I want to end with this. I'm, I'm gonna give both of y'all uh, an opportunity to do this. I think it's uh, it's cool. So we're gonna start with Mike because you're the youngest. Yeah, you're the youngest, right? If you had an opportunity right now to write your story, we've kind of talked about how it started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Does it end in Detroit? Does it end with Pro Bowls? Does it end with Super Bowls? And then what does Mike Ford do when football ends? Um, I would say, you know, I'm just starting. You know, the rest, we already got that story. I would say for this year, I just want to take it one year at a time. And I want to, I want to be one of those guys that's up there with – Top top playmakers, and then from there, Pro Bowls. Yeah, I want those. We don't know how. I ain't putting a number on it. There's no numbers on it. But now, I yeah, sure. get there. Like, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get there first. I got there once, and the second year I couldn't go. But I was like, shoot, I made it. Yeah, so you know, what I, mean? I got a red jersey, and I ain't never played with no red team. Yeah, we all want Super right. Bowls, so I for sure want one of those. You know, um, if I could, I would 100% love to stay in Detroit. Like, I feel like that's something my dad would be proud of. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would love to be there. Um, and then after football, man, I wanna I wanna own like be in business. That's mm -hmm. my main thing. Have real estate, you know, do stuff like that outside of there, you know, just still make my money work for me and mm -hmm. be able to spend time and, with my family too. Where I ain't gotta no no club yeah. no club. <laughs> DJ no, I'm, I'm good on that. But you know what I'm saying? Be able to have enough money to where I don't gotta work again. And I can spend time with my kids, my family, and mm -hmm. be able to raise them and show them, you know, what I'm saying some stuff I've never seen. So Michael Kelly Forge the third. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Doc? Uh, you know me, OG. Uh, it's, it's, I obviously got the goals I want to achieve. Uh, I get there when I get there. I mean, I'm going to work my ass off. That's all I can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, and after ball, I'm going to be happy with whatever I achieve. If it ended when we start the season, then I mean, I'm satisfied. Because, like you said, put your all in to know that it was nothing you could ever walk away and say, damn, I didn't give him all. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in the after ball, I mean, I feel like. It's, it's self-explanatory. You know no, what I'm gonna be. I at. know what you're gonna be doing. <laughs> Hard work, Shay. Hey, it don't stop. Hey, Shay, <laughs> Shay, you gonna have that toothpick in your mouth? <laughs> I you might have the little hey hat on. Hey hat on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know just a simple life. That'll be that'll be fine for me. Um, I, obviously, I don't do too much. Uh, I mean, I got what I got going. So I mean, I'll be I'll be fine after ball. So the I mean, the goal is just to do what I can do now. Right. You know. Uh, We'll end like this. I think the what happens with us is we spend so much time focused on like individual accomplishments because in the end, those are the things that allow us to be the people to the people that matter, right? Like no matter no matter what people say, as individual as our sport is, our lives are, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And what happens is our families grow, right? I got two girls, I got a boy, uh, I got a wife, but I got y'all, and you know, and I got friends, and so, mm -hmm. like the thing for me is, and what I would impart to y'all is, I never thought I'd be this, right? You know what I'm saying? Like you talk about being simple, like I tell people all the time, you like they ask me like, what you want to do with TV? I was like, oh, I just love football. I was like, since I love football, and they pay me to talk about it, I talk about it, yeah, and yeah. then I talk to people, they'll be like, well, you could be a star. I don't want to be a star. Yeah. You know, like I'm not, no, I'm not going to do a vlog from my house. I'm not going to post videos of my face yeah. afterwards because that's not for yeah. me. Yeah. Like the, the biggest thing I would say, fellas, man, is do enough playing football that whatever you choose to do when you're done, you can do it with people you rock with. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. so many times, especially as us as undrafted guys, we got to deal with folks and treat folks in ways that we probably wouldn't normally because we don't have nothing in common, Yeah. yeah. right? Like, I don't even think you're a good dude or a good woman, but I understand I got to be a certain way with you in order to take care of the people I got to take care of. Yeah. yeah. So, man, put everything into doing your job now so whatever you choose to do when you're done ain't no job. Yeah. Appreciate y'all boys, man. Appreciate, Appreciate y'all coming on the cast. Appreciate you. You know what I mean? And y'all y'all were actually a lot lighter and happier and more fun than I expected y'all to be. For sure. Hey man, this is first face first, the draft. Underestimated and still I made it.
in the book of hard knocks, I'm highly educated. Nobody told me looked over, but still dedicated. Played in the league for 13, I ain't gotta be favorite. Two Super Bowls, Honolulu, I stood with the greatest. The thing is this, if never rich, I'm good with my neighbors. DB precision, television, they ain't asked for no favors. Numbers don't lie, neither do pictures, just look in the papers. No backing down or turning back.